हेलो हाय एवरीवन हाय एवरीवन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विथ टुडे सेशन ओके आई कैन सी सम पीपल हैव ऑलरेडी जॉइंड हाय पुवीन हाय तनवी हाय स्मरल हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन होप यू आर ऑल हैविंग अ रियली ग्रेट डे ओके सो यस ओके सो आई थिंक मोर पीपल विल कीप जॉइनिंग वी कैन वील जस्ट गेट स्टार्टेड विद द सेशन बिकॉज वी हैव अ रियली इंटरेस्टिंग वन लाइंड अप फॉर यू सो अगेन हेलो एवरी वन गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू दिस वेरी वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव सेशन फ्रॉम फर्स्ट क्राई पेरेंटिंग द टॉपिक फॉर टूडे इज जेंटल बिगिनिंग्स ईजिंग इन टू ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग एंड एज यू वुड हैव गेस्ट फ्रॉम द टॉपिक वी आर सेलिब्रेटिंग द वर्ल्ड ब्रेस्ट फीडिंग वीक Now this session is a small effort from our side to support breastfeeding mothers. But first of all, why do we even need a session on breastfeeding? Isn't it like the most natural or normal way of doing things? Well it is, but a lot of mothers who have breastfed would tell you that breastfeeding is not actually that easy and it comes with its fair share of challenges. Hence today we have a lactation specialist who will be joining us very soon. and she will help us uncover a number of different facets of breastfeeding now before i go ahead and invite her uh, i just want to quickly remind you guys that if you have any questions uh, anything that you want to express please put them in the comment section and please please stay on till the very end because not only will the session will will because not only will the session be a power packed one but we also have a very very special surprise waiting for you towards the very end Okay now I'm just going to quickly go ahead and invite our expert for the day Okay I think mama is waiting second just start the camera Hello hi hi Pratham ma'am how are you I'm good I'm good how are you Good good Thank you so much for doing this and welcome <laughs> thank you thank you so much um you've already given the audience a very um, you know very, very high expectation saying that it's going to be very power packed and things like i'm under pressure now <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you are the last one who should be under pressure <laughs> Ma'am, all right all right quick introduction and then we can just dive into the questions okay yes yes so, okay so uh, ms pratha is a lactation specialist she is based out of goa She is an advanced certified lactation professional. She keeps doing a number of these breastfeeding workshops and she helps a lot of mothers like us ease into breastfeeding. Okay. So with that ma'am let's just quickly dive into the questions because there are a lot of them. Uh yeah. first thing ma'am what uh, we want to understand is that is breastfeeding really beneficial? Because you know, there's a lot of talk around how moms should definitely breastfeed their kids. but is it really that beneficial and are the benefits for the mother as well as the child long term um okay so before we speak about benefits i think i would like to actually quickly uh, you know get it out there that breastfeeding should not only be done because it is so beneficial to the mother and so beneficial to the baby i think that the whole concept of breastfeeding is just that it's the most natural thing to do you know it's 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 the most normal thing to do it's the most biological thing to do the fact that we can bear uh, babies and then you know nourish them inside our body and then being able to nourish them outside our body okay the whole point and the uh, reason why we have breasts also in the first place is so that we can nourish our offspring for at least 6 months of time and then of course beyond that for a year two years three years whatever a mother chooses to do now along with that yes definitely it has a lot of benefits and uh, anything that is you know very natural um, and biological generally has a lot of uh, benefits to it mm. okay that's just how nature is that's that's just how our bodies are uh, are made and that's how our bodies are built so yes to answer your question uh, directly breastfeeding is extremely beneficial to the mother to the baby uh, there are um, now for the for the for the baby um if you even look on the 
internet and things like that you know they will say it helps with uh, cognitive behavior uh, development it helps with um, you know um, uh, childhood uh, uh, the babies the baby may not or the child may not have a childhood cancer um, or uh, you know um, especially that it is it is a part of uh, your history right and um, um, the baby may not have uh, diabetes and you know all such kind of health benefits just keep adding up when it comes to breastfeeding for the baby okay uh, mm-hmm. if you tend if you happen to breastfeed your baby there are lesser chances of the baby is dying of something called as sids that is a uh, sudden infant death syndrome this is because mainly uh, that um, you know breastfed babies tend to wake up very frequently okay and the whole reason for sids is that babies just die unfortunately in their sleep okay and when the babies are breastfed they will um, you know wake up more frequently so because they get hungry they will wake up more frequently and that will make sure that they wake up you know at a at a good interval so that they are you know because they get hungry and the milk digests very fast so we have to understand that breastfeeding is a very um, holistic approach it's not just about hunger and just about uh, you know nutrition it is also about so many other things that are you know associated with it especially emotional and uh, uh, mental well being of the baby and the mother as well uh, breastfeeding for the mother uh, definitely ovarian breast cancer um, mm-hmm. diabetes for her hypertension postpartum depression one of the biggest things that you know i think we have been going through postpartum depression for years our mothers and grandmothers also have gone through it mm-hmm. it's just that uh, it was never spoken about but that also you know the mother's mental health also is something that can really be nourished she feels she may feel fulfilled if that is something that she wants to do if she wants to breastfeed her baby then that mm-hmm. can help it can help in many 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 ways lot of lot of benefits to it great thank you ma'am thank you that was an amazing uh, answer thank you so much for that okay. uh, coming to another aspect of health which is around diet so as a breastfeeding mother there are two types of concerns one is that you need to like get healthy yourself and second is that second is the health of the baby of course right. so you know what are the what is the kind of diet that a mother should follow during this stage and are there also any diet related myths that you would like to debunk um see diet in any aspect is very important okay what we put into our body is what we are at the end of the day okay so it's very important that uh, we are mindful of what we eat now there are certain myths uh, in terms of uh, you know for breastfeeding mothers in terms of they will say okay drink a lot of milk so that you can make milk okay mm-hmm. which is uh, which doesn't make sense aap gai dete ho gai doodh nahi peeti hai but she has a lot of milk ko ghas khati hai okay so i think that you know we also need to look at it from that perspective we eat a lot of vegetables okay we what we need to understand from that is that you know she eats grass or something like that to make milk so that's what we need to do maybe you know eat a lot of vegetables um uh, eat protein rich diet it may not necessarily be uh, your um, meat and fish and chicken or something like that it can also come from mostly from vegetables so i personally think that you know having a protein rich diet having a, a predominantly vegetarian diet i'm not saying don't eat non veg okay eat whatever you like but this can actually help you uh, keeping yourself healthy and then in turn ensure that you are going to you know make good amount of milk because you know it's always interconnected your health your milk supply your baby's health and the milk supply for the baby okay so everything is interconnected so uh, there are certain foods they are called galactogogs uh, that you need to consume if at all you do have like a like a supply issue which uh, you know a lot of mothers are facing nowadays in that case then you can definitely uh, you know try things like um, methi jeera uh, you know uh, like i said green leafy vegetables lot of protein and uh, you know uh, oats garlic these are some things that have proven to be good galactogogs for the mother okay so which can help in increasing your supply however a very important point to note is that no matter what you eat no matter mm-hmm. what you drink okay of course drinking lots of water but no matter what you consume yeah. if you are not removing milk from the breast efficiently all these things are going to be completely useless okay oh. so you have to ensure that you are removing milk from the body 
द मोर मिल्क यू रिमूव द मोर मिल्क यू विल मेक द लेस मिल्क यू रिमूव द लेस मिल्क यू मेक ओके आप बॉडीज आर एक्सट्रीमली इंटेलिजेंट इट इज नॉट अननेसेसरीली गोइंग टू जस्ट यू नो मतलब दूध के ऐसे फवारे निकल गए यू नो मोर फॉर मोस्ट ऑफ इट्स नॉट लाइक दैट इट डजन वर्क लाइक दैट ओके इनफैक्ट इफ दैट इज हैपनिंग दैट मीन समथिंग इज रॉन्ग ओके नथिंग शुड बी टू मच नथिंग शुड बी टू लेस ऑल्सो so it's very important that you know you have to uh, uh understand that you remove milk and then you make milk there are mothers who have gone without having any kind of supplements or galactogogs and have great supply of milk mm-hmm. all right so, okay. so removal of milk on a timely and efficient manner is very very important either by the baby if for some reason the baby can't do it then you can use alternate methods like a pump or hand expression mm-hmm. and emptying your breast that is going to help the most great great thank you ma'am for that yeah um uh, i'm coming a little bit like focusing a little bit to challenges now uh the one thing that we understand that the initial latching like the child latching to the breast initially is a bit of a concern for moms and that's also a stress point so can you just shed some light on that like is there a good latch uh, what can mothers do to enable that good latch yeah um so there are a lot of factors that uh, you know uh, matter when it comes to latching now it depends on what kind of birthing process has happened okay uh, has it been uh, a c section has it been a vaginal delivery or normal delivery how long if it was a vaginal delivery or even if it was a c section was the mother in labor for a very long period of time mm-hmm. okay and what happened during labor how was the mother's uh, uh, you know body responding to the entire process there are so many things like that also it depends on whether you know maybe forceps were used maybe baby suction was used to remove the baby out from the mother's mm-hmm. uh uterus mm-hmm. right so all these factors ultimately make a difference when it comes to the latch it is not as simple as okay you take the baby you put the baby to the breast and the baby latches for most mm-hmm. yes this happens okay if done in the timely manner a latch is something that has to be uh, achieved in the first hour okay which is called the golden hour as soon as the baby is born now it is called so also because uh, the moment the baby is born they are uh, extremely active their cortisol levels that is their stress levels are really high mm-hmm. okay as soon as they are born because the birthing process is very very challenging not just for the mother but also for the baby okay we have to understand that yes we go through a lot of pain when we are birthing our babies but our babies also go through extreme amount of stress when they are being born especially when they are coming out from the vaginal canal you see that you know their head also presses against you know uh, uh, that's why it is soft so that it presses and it comes out through the vaginal canal right but this can put a lot of stress on the on the uh, baby okay because of which their stress levels go high and within mm-hmm. that hour when you latch the baby on they are so active at mm-hmm. that point in time that they will latch on to the mother's breast and be able to efficiently breastfeed okay however if this has happened and then the baby uh still continues to have latching issues then there are other things that you need to see there are stages in which we generally go through this entire process we will you know find out how what kind of birth the mother has had what happened soon after birth you know uh, was there any like i said first steps or suction or anything used uh, during birthing okay mm-hmm. and uh, uh, uh you know then we check the baby we check the baby's anatomy we check the baby's neck their you know their entire body is examined for this you know in case there is a problem with latching generally latching issues can also happen if the baby has a tongue tie a lip tie mm-hmm. okay um or uh, they have a high palate okay maybe uh, they have torticollis so their neck might be sl- slightly tilted it could be so many things okay basic basically even birthing traumas can cause uh, issues with latching or mm-hmm. if the baby is a premature baby even in that case mm-hmm. so it's uh, all these things can be sorted as time passes you can uh, get these things sorted out but um, most of the times in my uh, career on my in my profession is what i have seen is that uh, babies um, you know are unable to latch only because of something like something as simple as a position you know maybe you are not holding the baby correctly you just need to turn the baby towards you and then get the baby to latch on so the general protocol for any like the most common thing that i would say 
would be get the baby belly to belly turn the baby towards you get the baby towards the breast let the baby open her mouth nice and wide and then you mm-hmm. push the baby towards the breast okay and the baby sucks on the areola of the breast and not only the nipple of the breast so all these mm-hmm. when everything comes together then you know that okay fine it is it is going well but if doing all these things also and the baby is not latching on correctly or the mother is in pain then uh, that is something that needs to be scrutinized further sir sure. sure thank you ma'am uh, coming to the next part about how a woman's body completely changes during this period so uh, when it comes to say clothing is there something like because leaking milk is a big problem you know plus other bodily changes that have happened so is there like something that women should take care of, even when it comes to clothes whether it's about type of material or kind of clothes or nursing bra anything yeah yeah definitely uh, there are so many options that are available uh, nowadays you know i mean but i feel that you know whatever you are comfortable in mostly like cotton or something like that you know can really work uh, work well for you when you are when you are nursing especially and having a, a nursing friendly uh, clothing you know like uh, something that can be easily opened up and you know feed the baby even if you are on the go say for example you've gone to a shopping mall you've gone to a move you know movie i don't think you should take such a small baby but uh, you know maybe a shopping mall maybe a temple maybe a anything you know a party uh, a for dinner and you just want to you know you want to enjoy yourself you want to be amongst your friends and you want to breastfeed your baby then you should be able to do it but of course your comfort also matters uh so there are i think like you know something like that can really help breastfeeding uh friendly bras are also very very uh helpful in this situation you know you get some really nice uh, bras nowadays with good material so yeah for sure you know these these products can really help with uh, the entire process just making it look making you look also really beautiful and pretty at the same time you know maybe you know having a little bit of comfort and a few pockets and zips here and there to just help you with the process yeah for sure great. thank you ma'am uh, great here i would also like to highlight uh, for our audience that in case you are looking to buy some fashionable and functional maternity or nursery wear uh, that would fit during as well as post pregnancy do check out bella mama's products on first cry all their products are made of natural and breathable fabric and have nursing access to provide a comfortable nursing experience plus they also have a huge variety so like you know as ma'am was saying whether it's whether it's casual wear or uh, office wear or athleisure you know you will get all of that with bella mama plus they also have very comfortable maternity lingerie so which is like very crucial during breastfeeding so do check out their products on first cry so uh now now coming to the next segment just like one thing is that uh, while the mother is going through all of this there is like you know she has the partner and other family members around her so what is it that these people can do to make her more comfortable or you know how can they sort of create a supportive environment for her okay um i honestly think that uh, your partner uh, or the people who are around you helping you raise your baby can literally make or break your uh, breastfeeding relationship i truly believe in that because uh, at that point in time especially nowadays with us with uh, with uh, modern women i would say because there are so many things that we do we we work also and uh, you know uh, our lifestyle is very very different now um during this time if we are going to have a partner or uh, you know maybe a mother in law or a mother who is not supporting what we want to do whether it is to breastfeed or not breastfeed or um, whatever whatever choices you want to make with your child you know mm-hmm. i think that having that kind of support is extremely important and because we are talking about breastfeeding today mm-hmm. um it's very important that you that you receive that kind of help and for them to be able to help you they need to also have proper information on breastfeeding right so i see that a lot of my uh, clients actually uh, attend my sessions alone right mm-hmm. only the mother will attend the session that you know okay aur kisi ki zarurat kya hai wo maa ko hi karna hai to usko hi pata hoga but mm-hmm. it is not 
दैट यू नो माँ को ही करना है सबको करना पड़ता है not the breastfeeding and not the latching, but making an conducive environment for the mother, supporting her, you know, just being there for her, making sure that her food is uh, on time, taking the baby. uh from the mother if the mother is okay with it that is taking the baby away from the mother uh and letting her rest for some time or if the mother expresses uh, you know um uh, chooses to express and feed the baby then there is help available then if she wants to go out or whatever whatever her mental health also is extremely important and i think that the family can play a very very important um and significant role uh mm-hmm. to make sure that the mother's mental health is in check more than anything else you know physical health it up everybody takes care of that okay you will have so many people who will come and you know keep feeding you different kinds of food this is good ye doodh ke liye acha hai wo doodh ke liye acha hai but they have to also understand ki sirf doodh hi karna maa ka kaam nahi hai you know that's not the only thing there is a, a so many there are so many other things required for her uh, recovery which is also what the family needs to do mm-hmm. okay and now in my in my case um, i was adamant on breastfeeding my daughter i had so many issues with breastfeeding but if i had not had the kind of support that i received from my partner and from my uh, mother in law or mother at that point in time i wouldn't have been able to uh, you know take certain decisions and continue to breastfeed my baby for two and a half years even when i wanted to wean her off and i wanted to stop breastfeeding it was my husband who helped me with the process okay because okay. because it was him because he was there to take care of her to be with her to sleep with her in the night i was able to wean my daughter off and in a in the most beautiful and gentle way you know mm-hmm. so i think that is very important that you have your family besides you and if not family then friends or whoever you know but start creating your your people or your group your clan just you know before you even have the baby it's very very important mm-hmm. yeah great thank you ma'am thank you so much uh with that ma'am what we'll do is we'll uh, uh, take some audience questions yeah okay, and, and uh, before taking the questions for the audience i would also like to announce that uh, uh, we've selected some lucky questions or you know uh, lucky people from the audience and we'll just take up these five questions and uh, like the special gift that we were talking about is for these five people that we have chosen <laughs> Okay, so the first question is uh, from Advocate Iram Fatima, and she says, "Is it normal to only have a small amount of colostrum, the first milk that comes out of the breast? Like only a small amount of colostrum? Is that normal? And for how long should she breastfeed?" Okay, so just for reference, colostrum is something that starts forming in our breast from the second trimester onwards. So maybe from about. uh 24 27 weeks or something like that you will start having colostrum in your breasts so um your body will regularize that colostrum as in you know as and when it 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 uh, you know the time as and when the time passes and as soon as the baby is born um the baby will receive about you know colostrum for about 2 or 3 days generally okay Okay. but i don't understand what you mean by very little colostrum has uh, you know the baby has received now does that mm-hmm. mean that uh, the baby was uh, only fed on day 1 and the baby has received only little bit of colostrum or does it mean that you only got a little bit of colostrum and then after that the you know the milk uh, the transition milk came in so the the mm-hmm. how it's divided it is uh, we have colostrum then we have transition milk and then we have mature milk which ultimately continues until and unless you decide to feed the baby which is okay. after 6 months 1 year 2 years 3 years whatever you decide so okay. i don't think that it, this, this is something that you need to stress about ki um, you know my baby has received only this much colostrum or that much colostrum that uh, totally depends on your body okay so whatever mm-hmm. colostrum your baby has received mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. it that's good enough okay we just need to see that our babies are happy there you know um it's there there's no real way for us to know how much the baby is drinking especially if the baby is breastfeeding directly by latching because we are we cannot see we don't have transparent uh, breasts so we cannot see how much milk the baby is having plus we cannot measure it we don't know 20 ml 30 ml 50 ml we cannot see it with the with other methods of feeding we can okay so do not focus on that focus on the baby okay uh, how is the baby is the baby latching well are you okay Uh, are you in pain or 
there is it's completely painless and what are the baby's urine output what about the baby's poop color is it changing is the baby gaining weight is the baby sleeping well okay these are all the factors that you need to keep in mind okay, okay. and breastfeed for as long as you want i mean that's totally uh, your decision 6 months exclusive breastfeeding be beyond that until 1 year the main source of nutrition for a baby still stays breast milk or formula whatever you are giving uh food is just a complementary okay a lot of people think that oh my god from 6 months food is going to start so now you know everything is going to be fine no your baby is just going to throw the food around and they will just reject the food okay they are not going to be uh, yeah they will just be like eh mujhe nahi chahiye mujhe doodh do okay so they will they will still their main source of nutrition still be breast milk till 1 year beyond that who recommends that you breastfeed for at least 2 years and uh, that's then ultimately your decision beyond that people have gone up to 3 4 5 6 years also so that's maybe okay. even more than that so yeah sure so now the next question is from saloni lodha and she asks uh, can i exercise regularly while breastfeeding and will it affect my breast milk supply not at all please uh, exercise uh, you know if you have got a go ahead from your doctor please go ahead and exercise uh, you know uh, practice yoga if you like or if you like to go to the gym or whatever whatever form of exercise you like please do it um, try not to put too much pressure on the breast so when you are exercising you will have to wear uh, like a really tight uh, sports bra okay so mm-hmm. that uh, may uh, you know in terms of affecting milk supply it will affect your breasts probably because it's a very tight uh, fitting tight material so if you are going to do something like uh, yoga or something like that that's going to be a little better for you in terms of exercising because uh, you don't have to use very tight bras when it comes to yoga that's the only you know advantage over here of probably doing so choose a kind of uh, a form of exercise which uh, will not uh, you know um, uh, where you don't have to wear clothes that are really extremely tight uh, on the breasts but other than that if you if you want to run or you want you want to exercise any any form of exercise that you enjoy please go ahead and do it in fact it is the best thing you can do for sure yes thank you ma'am uh, the next question is from aditi sonandkar and she she is asking are there any techniques to pump and store breast milk effectively for times when direct breastfeeding is not possible Yes yes of course um more than technique um it is just about uh, understanding how to pump how to save that milk and then how to feed the milk to the baby so generally um, like i'll just give you an example it uh, really depends from person to person and for what reasons they are pumping but say for example when i started work uh, what i would do is i started creating a stash okay uh, which I, which i kept aside for about almost 500 to one, uh, you know 1 liter of milk 1 liter of milk was kept aside for my baby in the freezer okay. and when i would go to work i would pump at work bring that milk back home and that milk was fed to my baby the next day so there are different strategies i will not be able to explain all the strategies i will need to understand from you um what is your reason for pumping you know why do you want to pump so accordingly then i will be able to tell you but there are different strategies there are different ways that you can pump there are different kinds of pump some people even um, uh, are uh, you know they prefer using hand ex- expression as a method of pumping as opposed to a pump okay as a, uh, yeah so there are different ways there are there's a manual pump electric pump double electric pump there are so many options available but to understand your uh, need to pump is what you know is required here and then i will be able to tell you how to do it sure okay now moving to the next question this is from nasima fajarullah and she is saying that she has a 3 and 1/2 year old daughter uh, and her daughter uh, she wants to stop breastfeeding but her daughter only breastfeeds when she needs attention like when she has thrown a tantrum or something that is the time when uh, the mother has to breastfeed her to calm her down so she is asking that i she wants to provide breast milk to her child at that time because the child seems to be in need of it but at the same time she feels very guilty 
because she wants to start the weaning process so you know how does how does like how can she go about it hmm okay so like i had said in the beginning that uh, breastfeeding is not only about food okay initially yes it is about food uh, it is about nutrition it is about ensuring that the baby gains weight and uh, you know is nourished basically the baby's body is nourished but as the babies grow older it is less about hunger it is less about food and it is more about comfort okay. which is what is happening in nasima's case right so uh, her daughter whenever she throws a tantrum now she uh, or or she's upset for whatever reason she is not throwing this tantrum or whatever because you know you know she's she, it's not basically to just uh, you know just because she wants to do it or something like that. something must have upset her and that's the only way she knows how to express herself most mostly okay and um, that is something that you know you, that 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 uh, you need to understand as well that your child is probably just upset and the best way that you can calm your child down is by uh, you know breastfeeding them and that happened in my case also where my daughter you know she was running one day she had a fall she had a cut on her lip and it was bleeding mm-hmm. and she was crying so much that you know that she had this fall and you know everything and the moment i said dudu she was you know she forgot everything all the pain all the crying everything disappeared and you know she had a nice feed for 5 minutes or so and she was done okay so mm-hmm. we have to understand that you know it is not only it's not only about uh, food it is about comfort love bonding entertainment sometimes okay and that is what uh, you know breastfeeding encompasses so if you are okay with it please continue doing it but if uh, that is something that you want to stop okay but so try to handle her uh, tantrum um, or her discomfort in another way mm-hmm. okay try to channel her energy in another way maybe use a little bit of a distraction method or something like that but understand that she will grow out of this eventually okay mm-hmm. she's not going to be like a you know maybe a 10 or a 12 year old saying ki nahi i have today my day has been very bad at school i need to breastfeed <laughs> okay it is definitely going to change she's only 3 and a half years old now so maybe do it gently slowly slowly mm-hmm. keep reinforcing talking to her telling her that you know whenever you are upset mama is there mama will give you a hug okay with where the breasts are i will give you a hug right there but you know it's only that you may not have get to drink drink the dudu i'll just you know mm-hmm. just hold you why don't we try just holding each other ah. you know so maybe something like that can be can be done because that is pretty cool <laughs> thank you ma'am thank you for that and the last question that we have is from neelam gajjar and she is saying that her baby is 2 year old and uh, can she still breast breastfeed her child even though her like a baby is 2 year old so can she still breastfeed and is it okay for the baby and the mother's health yeah absolutely i mean we have uh, nasima who is feeding for 3 and a half years 2 years also you can feed yeah why why not okay um see it's totally your choice it is uh, it is something that uh, you need to be comfortable doing so i always say that breastfeeding is a relationship it between two people okay now here you have a relationship with your baby uh, which also includes breastfeeding right mm-hmm. so it's it's it th- in this relationship one person cannot be uh, uh, sad and upset and in pain and in discomfort and the other person is like happily suckling on the breasts no mm-hmm. okay it cannot be like that if one if the mother is unhappy then the child is ultimately going to be unhappy okay because that's how the mother and child connection and bond is the child mm-hmm. generally happens to spend most of the time with the mother mm-hmm. right so it will come off on the child so if you are comfortable breastfeeding your baby it's not going to harm you it's not going to harm the baby your breast milk um, uh, nutritional value never uh, you know uh, what do you say vanishes you know some people you'll hear you'll hear them say that it's just water and things like that it uh, changes as per the needs of the baby but it will never really uh, you know be equivalent to water all the water also is very very important uh, for our body you know so even if somebody says ki ha pani ki tarah hi hai ha to pani bhi to zaruri hai it's okay okay but if it's going to provide them with uh, comfort you know because we have to look at our babies in all you know in all terms 
not just physical health but mental and emotional health also so if that is something that you can provide to your baby beyond 2 years and you are okay doing it please do it but if you are not comfortable and you want to be in your baby then that is something that that's a process that you will have to start whenever possible for you oh sure sure ma'am thank you so much Most uh, i'll just like i will just announce again that uh, like all the five questions that we took uh moms we will provide you a special gift voucher from bella mama we will dm it to you so please do uh, keep a check on those dms uh and yeah if you have any more questions you can always go to the first care parenting app and you know go to go to our q and a section our doctors are live and you can get instant solutions to all your problems so yeah, with that i would just like to close the session ma'am thank you so much again for joining us it yes. was really really informative yes. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you everyone for attending the session. Happy breastfeeding week, twenty twenty three. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye.